In 1922, Abdul and his wife Zainab Khan decided to start making candy using a coal pot, a scissors, and a marble stone under their house. In Presal, being in the center of the sugarcane fields of Trinidad. So he started on a very small scale, of course, and selling to the neighbors and the surrounding village. But it was really when his son, Ibrahim, at the age of 10, took over the business, that he had the real vision to grow and expand and move it from a cottage industry into a factory. Right now, they export 65 to 70% of production. The major milestone was really when the company moved from a labor-intensive, hand-produced products to becoming fully automated. As it gave the company economies of scale, it gave the company the ability to produce more consistently and also to maintain the quality, which of course gave it a competitive advantage. The first market we exported to was Guyana around 1966. Guyana, Barbados and Jamaica, those were the three main export markets that we targeted. And it came about because in those days you had Carifta, which was the Caribbean free trade area. So there were no duties involved, etc., which eventually turned into CARICOM. And the very first thrust of the export was within CARICOM. Almost the entire CARICOM, Grenada, St. Vincent, St. Lucia, everybody that we were exporting to. And then it was in the 80s when the world started talking about globalization and trade liberalization, the vision shifted from CARICOM to the US and to UK and to Canada. At one time, we exported to New Zealand, to Hong Kong also, and it shows how adventurous the company was, to take risk. Ginger mint is very popular. Our gum line is also very popular. We, our dinner mint is very popular. And those are some of the main products that we put out in the export market. Most of our markets are English-based, except for Panama, Dominican Republic. But packaging and labeling in every market is different. For example, the US, the UK, Canada, they're all different. The labeling requirements, the packaging requirements are totally different. So you have to design based on the market you're going into and the, the laws and rules that govern that country. For example, our ginger mint. When we tried to introduce it in the US, nobody was interested. So the company just decided to take two crates of ginger mint, send it out there, and say, sample it, see if you like it. It caught on, and now we sell ton loads of ginger mint to the US. It's a family-based company that has grown in a rural district of Prisal and Kuva, and the opportunity to give back is huge. All the surrounding schools, religious organizations, sporting bodies, they all come to us and we give back to them. This year, as part of our 100 year celebration, we launched a whole foundation called KC Kin, which is KC Kids in Need. As you can well imagine, kids constitute a big part of our customer base. So it's our opportunity to give back in a structured way. I think other manufacturers should definitely explore the global market because our market is so restricted to 1.4 million people and there's only so much growth that you can generate out of that. And as part of manufacturing, your biggest competitive advantage comes from economies of scale. And the only way to do that is to grow your markets. And the export market is where the real value is. But you must be able to be innovative, you must have products that are competitive, you must have logistics in place, you must be able to do your market research, you must be adventurous, you must be willing to take risk. And once you are prepared to do those, the export market is where the real action is. And also it gives you the ability to earn foreign exchange, which as we know is in short supply. Because a lot of times our raw materials, we have to use foreign exchange to buy it. So if you're going to do that, you should become an earner of foreign exchange also. This award is really for the Khan family, for their vision, for their foresight, for staying with this company through all the cycles over 100 years and bringing it to this point and now looking forward into the future as to where do we go for the next 100 years.